Glory be to God. You know, thank you. Uh, I just want to tell you that Jesus loves you. That's right. Amen. 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 No matter what you have done, Lord, just impress this upon my heart earlier. No matter what you have done, Jesus is willing to forgive. Yes. Right. Yes. Somebody, uh, somebody says, "Yeah, but brother Dennis, I've committed the unpardonable sin," and you're in here. No, you haven't. No, that's right. That's right. right. Come on. Because if you've committed, the devil has lied to many people. That's right. Yeah. If you have committed the unpardonable sin, you wouldn't be in church. You don't want to know God. You don't want to hear about God. You don't want to have nothing to do with Him. That's right. If you've got a hunger and a heart toward the Lord Jesus Christ, you have not committed that sin. Quit listening to the devil. Those that, you know, Jesus, yeah, but you say, but yeah, but I have this, did this and did that. Jesus said, all manner of sin shall be forgiven among men except one. Yes. And he said, that's blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Right. And the devil has lied to many people to steal their faith, saying, you said this. If, if you committed blasphemy, you wouldn't want to know about God. That's right, that's right. right. Come on. You would be running from God. You would not want to come to church. You would not want to read your Bible. You would not want to hear about God. Those people that have committed that sin, the Holy Ghost is left. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. Listen to me. You can't come to Him without Him drawing you. You can't serve Him without Him working in you. Jesus said, no man comes unto me unless he be drawn by the Spirit. It's God that drew you. And then in the second chapter of Philippians, it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It's God doing all of it. You're in here this morning because of God. Right. And if you have committed the unpardonable sin, you wouldn't be in here because God wouldn't be dealing with you. That's right. Right. Yeah. So quit listening to the lie of the devil to steal your joy. Amen. 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 He used to do that to me many years ago. Because I said something. Maybe years ago as a kid. See, the devil wants to condemn you and beat you up. He doesn't want you growing in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Well, blessed be the name of the Lord we're finding out about. It. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Now, I want to talk to you this morning about how God knows you love him. Amen? Amen. If you would, go with me to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. I want us to look at verse number 3. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you humbly and reverently. Hallelujah. In that beautiful name. In the name that I love to mention, love to utter, the name of our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Thank you, Lord, for speaking through this clay unto this people. Thank you for giving illumination to my mind and direction to my spirit. Thank you that everything that needs to be said, Lord, will be said in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you're at 1 John chapter 2, look at verse number 3. 3 through 11. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we that we are in him. He that saith he abide in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. 
Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and walk and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Well, how does God know that we love him is when we love one another. You know, the first thing that God said about love is, is in Matthew chapter 5 verse 44, he said, love your enemies. That's right. And I remember years ago, I was a teenager at this time, the Lord impressed upon me, if I commanded you to love your enemy, how much more should you love your brother? Come on. Yeah. Now, it's easy for you, for you and I to love those that love us. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I mean, if you pat my back, it's easy for me to pat yours. It's easy for me to love them that love me, and it's easy for you to love them that love you. But what about those that don't treat you good? That's right. And you pray for them. See, this is the difference when Jesus said, all men shall know that you belong to me because you love one another. Now, God wants us to love our brother and sister. Like you would love a family member. Now, how many times have you had to forgive a family member? <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> well, we have to forgive our brother and sister. Right. Amen? Because I had many sins. I was sipping and tipping in the bars and the boo halls, and Jesus forgave me for gambling and coveting and beat people out of their money. And so in return, he says, you forgive. Right. Amen. 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 See, when you love others, you're showing God that you love him. That's right. You know, somebody says, but I love the Lord, but I hate this person. No, you don't love the Lord. Come on, man. Your darkness is over you. That's right. Uh, the Bible says in 1 John here, he that hated his brother is a murderer. <laughs> and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. That's right, right. Now Jesus said a new commandment that I give it to you that you love one another. That means when Brother Dennis says something that you don't like. Well, thank you, Frank. <laughs> Amen. Or if you say something that bothers me, I still love you. Amen. Why? Because we are flawed. Every one of us in here lives in this devilish flesh because it has not been born again. Now, I have trained my flesh to a certain extent. It used to cry out one thing years ago that uh, after I was saved, born again, but after training it so many years, it doesn't bother me in that area. But it still wants to get wild at times. Your flesh is not born again and that's why the Bible says in Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, Christians, by the mercies of God that you, not God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy. If you don't do nothing with your body, God's not doing nothing with it. You're the caretaker of it. Amen? And he wants to bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Jesus said in 1 John 2, 3, And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Now, now this is 1 John. Now turn over to the Gospel of John real quickly. And let's just look at something here in the Gospel of John. John chapter 14 I want us to look at verse number 15. John number 14, verse number 15.
Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now that's one way that we show God that we love him is when we keep his commandments. Now, we're all growing in grace. Right. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible says over there in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8 that we are to exercise ourselves unto godliness. And as I said before, I'll say it again, we're learning and we're growing spiritually. You say, well, Brother Dennis, I'm having problems in this area. Start exercising yourself in that area. That's right. I mean, show God some effort. Amen. 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 Um, see, when the Bible says in uh, 1 Peter 4, 8, for bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. Many times we think just serving God, just we have heaven to look to. Thank God for that. But God says serving him pays off in this life. It's profitable to serve him. But now, when you and I exercise physically, it only profits this body. It has nothing to do with your spiritual life. But when we exercise ourselves unto godliness, serving God, and you know what that is? It's walking in love. That's right. If you love me, you're not going to steal from me. That's right. That's right. If you love me, you're not going to kill me. That's right. If you love me, you're not going to do anything that would hurt me. That's right. In the same way, toward you. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. The Lord just reminded me of verse of scripture. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. That's right. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Somebody says, Well, I'm trying to walk in holiness. Walk in love then. That's right. Because uh -huh. if you love the Lord, you're not going to you, you're going to walk clean. Amen? Amen. If I love you, I'm not going to do you wrong. That's right. Yeah, now you're going to have this flesh. Then your flesh, really, you're two people. You're the, you, oh, thank you, Lord. That, Paul said he delight after the law of God with the inward man. You do too. That's right. In your spirit, you want to obey God. Amen. What causes you not to? This, this thing. This is what you have trouble with the majority of the time is your flesh. Somebody does you wrong, Renee, the first thing, that flesh wants to flare up. I'll give them the old treatment. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We all live in the flesh in here. So what do we do with the, our first reaction many times is when somebody says something or does something to us, our first reaction is this devilish flesh. There's no good thing in your flesh. That's right. Is it, Frank? Well, what do we have to do, Jesse? Fair, we got to crucify. Right, right. Amen, Mark. Every day. Hey, well, that's right. Every day. Every day. You know, last night, I did. I worked three jobs yesterday, and I come home and took a shower, and, and uh, Nikki fixed some quesadillas, and so we all. Hey, but I was kind of tired because I got up early for six days straight. And I was thinking, oh man, I need to go ahead and go to bed about, I don't know if it's 8 30 or 9 or something. It seemed like the older I get, the quicker I want to go to bed. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> man, I used to stay up late all, nearly all night. But anyway, uh, I thought I need to pray for this person. And so what did I do? I crucified the flesh. The flesh wanted to go lay down right then. But I thought, I need to pray for this person. So I opened up the Bible and uh, knelt down and I started praying for the person. But the flesh, this, this did not want to kneel. This did not want to pray. This thing wanted to go straight to the bed. But I crucified it. Amen. 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 There's times you've got to crucify that flesh. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. If you don't crucify it, it'll crucify you. Right. It'll control you. That's right. Amen. Amen. It will dominate you. The man on the inside is supposed to be boss, not the flesh. That's right. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Now, Jesus said in that 15th verse of John chapter 
14, if you love me, keep my commandments. And you know, you were talking, Jesse, you walked out of here, but I thought, you got some preaching you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, if we love him, we keep his commandments. But it's also when you love him, whatever the Holy Ghost speaks to your heart, do it. That's right. Amen. I remember hearing a preacher. I heard he was an Assembly of God preacher. And he was pastoring in uh, Texas. And so there was an evangelist that knew about him, heard about him. And now this was during Christmas time, right? And he only had enough money, Danny, to get to this pastor's town on the bus. That's all we had. But, and so he gets to this pastor's town. He called up because I got it from the pastor himself. I heard him talk about it. And he got to this, this pastor's town and he called up to the parsonage and the pastor came down there and got him. And this was during Christmas time. Remember Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Not only the commandments out of the word, but when he speaks to us. That's right. Amen. There's times that he is speak, Carolyn. Amen, Jackie. And then we got to obey in here. That's right. Amen. Amen, David. Well, the Lord spoke to this uh, pastor and told him to give this man a certain amount of money. He just had to go to me while you were talking about finances. And he says, Lord, again, a flash don't want to do it. He says, Lord, this is Christmas time. He's talking back, back to the Lord. This is Christmas time, Lord. And the Lord told him to give this traveling evangelist because that's all the money he had. So, the Lord spoke to this pastor and says, give him such, a, uh, such and such amount of money. And he talked back to the Lord, not in a bad way. I say talk back to the Lord. He was just talking to the Lord. And he says, the well, Lord, it is Christmas time, and it was a sacrifice for this pastor. But he obeyed the Lord willfully and cheerfully. Don't misunderstand us when I said talk back. He wasn't talking back in an arrogant or disobedient way. He was just talking back to the Lord like I talked back to you in conversation. I didn't want you to misunderstand. And, uh, and so he was talking to the Lord and he and so he obeyed God and gave this traveling evangelist a certain amount of money that the Lord told him to during Christmas time. Well, two years went by. Let me tell you, God's got an excellent memory. Amen, Tim. Amen, Chip. He's got an excellent memory. He knows all about you. Amen, Sister Mendes. Right. Well, two years went by, and the Lord used this pastor. Now, I forgot which one it was, a wheelchair or a stretcher case. I forgot. But it was in one of those cases, he looked at the person and said, rise and walk in the name of Jesus. And the person got out and was completely healed. Well, after the Lord used his pastor and this miracle of healing, the Lord spoke to him and says, if you wouldn't obey me two years ago when I told you to give that traveling evangelist a certain amount of money, I couldn't have used you here. That's right. Why? God had obedience. In other words, the Lord, you know, when we hear, we keep his commandments out of the word, but when he speaks to your heart about doing something, obey it. Yeah. Amen. You know, it makes me think about, you were talking earlier in giving, it made me think of my uh, Brother Harry Armstrong. Years ago, you know, Brother Harry, we've do, been doing prison ministry together for years, ever since 99, I believe it is. And... <clears throat> His mama, he had a bunch of siblings, and so his mama didn't have any food at home, like you were sharing. Yeah. And all of a sudden, she'd be singing to the Lord and worshiping the Lord in the kitchen, making the table. They don't have no food, but she's making the table. John, Jean, does that take safe, though? Yeah. She's making the table and dancing. And singing this little line of mine, Jesus on the main line. And all of a sudden, she gets a knock, Brother Harry has said many times, gets a knock at the door because she turned her petition into the Lord and not man. That's right. Amen. Amen. And there was groceries. <clears throat> Someone with groceries there to give her. 
God knows how to meet your need. That's right. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. Here's what the Holy Ghost just gave you. He doesn't need your help. <laughs> yeah. He created the universe and the world by his word. He doesn't need you to get involved with it. So quit looking at how he's going to do it and trust him. Right. Amen. Amen. The best thing that he wants you and I to do is just praise him and thank him because the Lord shared this with me years ago. Chris, I believe we was going to that meeting in uh, Morton, Mississippi or Lena, Mississippi when he gave me this. That uh, when you are in thanksgiving, you are in expectancy. But when you're not thanking God for nothing, you're not expecting nothing. That's right. Amen. right. When you are thanking Him, that's because you're you think he, you're you're expecting Him to do something in your life. But when you're never thanking God, that's because you're not you're in neutral. You're not believing Him to do anything. Amen. Well, blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to thank Him. Why? Because we are in expectancy. Amen. Amen. Thanksgiving moves you into expectancy. That's right. Glory to God. Well, I want you to go with me to Luke. This will be the last set of scriptures that we go to if the Lord doesn't give me nothing else. Luke chapter 10. I want you to look at verse 25 of Luke chapter 10. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? You know, Jesus asked him, he said, How readest thou? You know, some people read something different than you and I. Right. Some people can read a portion of the scripture and says, where do they get that from? Amen. That's totally opposite of the way I received it. And some other people received it. But they just read it the wrong way. There you go. Well, Jesus said in verse 25, in verse 26, he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered and said, Thou shalt love. Remember, he asked about inherit eternal life, this lawyer. And in verse 27, and he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength. Now look at this. Not some of it, but all of it. And with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Jesus, thou hast answered right. <clears throat> this do, and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, before I read, I know many of you do, but before I read, I'm going to read this to you. The Levites did all the work connected with the temple of God. Aaron's descendants were the priests. Who were the only ones who could enter the temple building to offer sacrifices to God? Leviticus, you know, chapter 1. They also blessed the people, carried the Ark of the Covenant, and received a portion of the sacrifices for their livelihood. And then I got here to read to you the Levites were Israelites from the tribe of Levi. The tribe was chosen by God to care for the temple and guide the people in worshiping God. The temple priests were all descendants of Aaron, who was a Levite. And you know, Aaron was Moses' his brother. So I just wanted to read that to you where you have a better understanding of what Jesus is about to say in verse 30. 
And Jesus answering and said to this lawyer, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Remember, the lawyer said, Who is my neighbor? And by chance there came down a certain priest that way and when he saw him he passed by on the other side a priest didn't even stop to help his neighbor they knew the law see titles does it titles will benefit us nothing somebody says he's a preacher somebody says he's a prophet well what kind of fruit do they have yeah. let me tell you this i've been around people that have dreams that have visions but had no fruit of mercy no fruit of what no fruit of forgiveness. They were real unforgiving. They had no fruit of love. I'm not following someone like that because they've had an awesome dream or vision. Come on. Right here. Yeah. Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit. Here's a priest. Somebody says, yeah, but they're an apostle. They're a prophet. They're a pastor. They're a pastor or teacher. Well, they're a Christian. Well, I'll find out about them if I hang around them. Why? Jesus said, you shall know them because of their fruit. What kind of fruit do they produce? Oh, I've met people. I've met people that have come up to me and tell me a dream. I was like, wow, man, that's awesome. But as I uh, got to know them, I never saw the fruit of love, never saw the fruit of forgiveness, never uh, saw where they were peacemakers, they were troublemakers. Let me tell you, just because somebody has a dream or a vision doesn't mean they're of God. That's right. I mean, you can get a dream or a vision from the devil. Yeah. I have received them from the devil. I received dreams from God, and I received them from the devil. You got to know the difference. If you don't, you can be deceived. How do I know the difference, Brother Dennis? Get into the book. Amen. You get into the word. This is how you eat it, you drink it. Amen. Jesus yeah. said in Matthew 4, 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. If you don't know the word, you're going to be easy. You're up for, for deception. But thank God we're learning. Amen. Yeah. Now, he was a priest. He looked upon this man and just passed him by. He was supposed to love his neighbor. Amen. Yeah. Let's go on reading. Or we would say a preacher. But look at verse number 32. And likewise, now Jesus is using a Levite. I just read to you what their office was. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. You know, Jesus is looking at our love toward people. Yes, he is. Amen, Sister Minister. You know how you're going to be known when you die and leave this world? It's how you treated people. That's right, right. You know, you might can think of some people right now. Oh, man, they were always praying for me when I got around them. I felt the love of God. They were, well, you remember that about them. Right. right. Amen. There's coming a time when you and I are going to <gasps> take our last breath. Yeah. There was a generation before us, and, there, and now it's us, and there's going to be a generation after us of Jesus Darius. Somebody said, I'm going to get right with the Lord. Well, no, you're not. It's going to be too fast. Yeah. And besides that, he knows your heart. You should want to serve him now. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. See, God looks at the heart. Yeah. He knows more about you than you know about you. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Aren't you glad? God is so merciful. Aren't you glad that he doesn't look at us like me? If God looked at me like others have looked at me, I'd be in hell. Amen. I've been stoned to death and in hell right now. But thank God, Kevin. He loves me. He loves you. And he loves you just as much as he loves me. Amen. Aren't you thankful? Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we have a priest and we have a Levite. But titles don't save. 
You know, I, I hear people sometimes, and I'm just going with the Lord. Hear people sometimes, they put, I'm an apostle, or I'm a prophet, well, I'm Brother Dennis. <laughs> Are you trying to make like Jesus said, He that is greatest among you should be your servant? Amen. I'm to serve you, and you're to serve me. Amen. Amen. I'm just here in this world pushing people toward Jesus and doing what he's called me to do and be a blessing to people. You know, I said, well, I am I'm a child of God of Brother Dennis. I don't have to put Apostle Dennis or Prophet Dennis or Evangelist or Pastor. I mean, people call me Pastor. That's fine. That's what I am. But I'm Brother. I'm your servant. We're to serve one another. Right. Amen. Amen. We're to love one another. Yes, you're going to have people to say something that you don't like, to do you wrong, and I know it. You're going to have people that mistreat your children and your grandchildren. You still got to love them. That's one of the main things that gets people out of the relationship with the Lord. I heard a preacher one time years ago. He said this, I never will forget it. He said, if you want to get a great calm, just mention finances and people's children. <laughs> there would be a great call. But we have to forgive people when they come against us in those areas. First of all, the devil. Listen, we have to strengthen those places in us that need strengthening. That's right. Amen? There's places in us that. Listen, we're all at different levels of spiritual spiritual growth, just like we are physical and mental. That's right. Amen? Amen. But we are to grow spiritually like we grow mentally and like, like we develop mentally, like we develop uh, physically. We are to develop in the spirit too. Let's don't just develop physically and mentally. Let's develop in the spirit. And one way we do that is by growing in love. See, the fruit of the spirit is, is fruit. Fruit starts off as a little bud. Now, years ago, if somebody... Uh, did me wrong, it was harder for me to forgive them, but over the years I noticed as I prayed for them, I grew in this fruit. The fruit, the, the fruit grew. It doesn't bother me. I've had people do me all kinds of things. Well, the devil will see to it. Why? Because he wants you, he wants you to serve, but you can't let that disturb. You remember what Paul said? He says, talked about what all he was going through and how he's been mistreated, stoned, shipwrecked imprisonment and all this. He can list a number of them. But you know what he said? But he said, none of these things move me. And they shouldn't move us. If somebody criticizes you or talks bad about you or does you wrong or lies about you, still love them. That shouldn't move you. That's right. Think about what they did to our brothers and sisters in the beginning. And the Lord impressed it on me not too long ago to do a sermon one morning about those that were uh, martyred for the testimony of Jesus about the 12 apostles. Many of them, you ought to see what they, what they went through. And, and, and the, uh, if we can't suffer criticism or persecution here, you would never be able to die for him if he came there for them. And you're just leaving. You're just, you would never feel it. You know, there's been those that have been put on the stake and they put the, and the light the fire and they sung hymns, praise to the Lord. And the fire had no power on their body till the Lord gave it power. That's right. Many times it didn't even burn while it was worshiping God, being burnt at the stake. If we can't handle being criticized, we would never be able to die for him. And you never know. You see how things have changed in this world in 2020, at the end of 2019, you never know what's coming upon this earth. And you want to always be ready because you never know when you're going to breathe your last breath. And eternity is forever. And I want to see Jesus. That's right. I will give you glory. Well done. Yes, sir. That's what I want to hear. Well, let's go on reading. Look at verse 33. The priest and the Levite. But verse 33 says, Jesus said, a certain Samaritan. Now, you already know why Jesus is using a Samaritan, I, I believe, you know. Yeah. The Samaritans and the Jews had no dealings with each other. Racial. That's it. Right. And so, 
So Jesus is using a Samaritan in verse 33, but a certain Samaritan as he journeyed came where he was and when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring him oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. I mean, he, he went out of the way to do other things. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence. Now his finances, his time, his finances. Now look at this. And gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three, he's talking to the lawyer, Thank his foul was neighboring to him that fell upon thieves. And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, and he said unto us, Go and do likewise. Remember what Jesus said? I don't know about you, but I rejoice down in mercy. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Tina, Tina, I got two Tinas in front of me. <laughs> and uh, Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, Sharon, for they shall obtain mercy. You know why I rejoice in mercy? I thank God for mercy. And when people, and I love showing it, somebody comes to me and says, Will you have mercy? I say, Yes, I will. They don't even have to ask. Why? Because I need it. I need mercy. I need that. And I want to show that. Amen. And Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. If we don't show mercy, we're not receiving it. That's right. Amen. Whatsoever a man sows, that, T H A T, that shall he also reap. Let's show love. Let's show mercy. Why? Because it's coming around back to us. That's right. Amen. Amen. Love. Is the best way because it's God's way. Now that doesn't mean that you have to agree with everything someone says or that you have to uh, hang around. Now if the Lord tells you to go and buy somebody that's done you wrong their meal, go do it. But that doesn't mean you gotta hang around them and be pals with them. Just God is saying, watch your heart. Guard it. Don't let unforgiveness and hatred in your heart. Because listen to me. You're not hurting the other person. You're hurting your relationship with God. See, I can't help what the other person does. But I can help what Dennis Phillips does. Amen. I can't help how the other person reacts. But I can help how I react. Are you hearing me? See, you are responsible for you. You're not responsible for the other person when they stand before God. You are, thank you, Lord. Work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But God said to love one another. We are to love one another. Yes, people's going to do you wrong. Yes, somebody's going to say something. And I'm going to say this. You're going to have people to do things purposely. But I have found out over the years, people have said things that I thought they didn't even know what they said. They really didn't even mean it. You know, it's just the way they talk. Yes, there's going to be people to do you wrong. There's going to be people to say things. But sometimes we've held something towards someone and they really didn't even mean it. It was just, because I said things that come out of this, I thought, they come out wrong. I didn't mean that that way. And there, I'm sure there's many times, thank you, Lord, you're a, you're, you're a spouse. You've all said things to, you, to your mate that came out the wrong way. But you see, amen, amen. I'm not the only one, thank you for this time. We've all said things. But what did your mate do? They forgave you. And if you can forgive your mate, you can forgive anyone else. Amen? God wouldn't ask you to do something if you couldn't do it. If he did, he would be unjust. 
And he's not unjust. Whatever God said we can do, we can do it because he gives us the power to do it. Amen. By the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen? I want to say this. Jesus Christ loves you so much, he died for you. Amen. And I don't want the devil to, he, to put condemnation on you because he does that. He loves doing that. Yes, you're going to, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you're going to miss it again. You're going to sin. When you do, don't let him tell you how bad you are. Say, Father, forgive me. Right there. Father, forgive me. I repent and ask you to forgive me in the name of Jesus. And he, he wiped it away by his blood, his holy blood that way. And just exercise yourself in the areas of godliness. And watch what happens. Amen. You see that the favor of God will begin to abide upon you. There is a place in the Lord where favor just rests upon you. And see, it's one thing to do, bro. It's one thing to not to, to want to grow in the Lord. And there's another thing that uh, you just don't want to grow in the Lord or try. See, God sees that in here. So just please see him, amen? Because my vote don't count, your vote don't count, and his does. And one of these days when we put off this tabernacle, we're going to be, uh, be before him. And I want him to smile and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter in to the joy of the Lord. Instead of saying, depart from me, I never do. Amen? Let's all stand. Well, glory be to God. The Lord is good. Amen? Amen. Amen.